Hi everybody, it's Claire. Today's uh, little short tutorial is just going to be a quick remake of um, a one that I did several months ago. You will recognise probably this beautiful double page from my Joanna Basford's Ivy and the Inca Butterfly. What we're going to be doing today is uh, just remaking um, the technique to complete these beautiful deep red dahlias. As I say, the tutorial from uh, several months ago has proved really, really popular, especially now that we've got Joanna's World of Flowers and there's lots of dahlias in that. However, the camera angle in that video isn't very good. So what I thought I'd do was today just make you a little quick uh, remake of that and hopefully we can get some better camera angles and you can see uh, much better what I'm doing. So let me just put that out the way. Let me just put my ivy book out the way and you can see underneath that I have my world of flowers. So I've got my world of flowers book here and you can see that I've already prepared one dahlia. So this beautiful red dahlia here. And what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit and then I'll show you the flower that we're going to be working on. So I'll need to move this up slightly because we're going to be working on this little fella here, if you can see him. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tilt my camera slightly because that helps me not get my hand in the way. And then I'm just going to move this up very slightly because this is quite difficult because this one's at the bottom of the page and I want it in shot. So what I have is um, my Prismacolor pencils. And I've got a range of, uh, let me show you this, I've got a range of deep reds. Now, your secret weapon to get this velvety, beautiful, dark, rich finish, your secret weapon is your black pencil. Because that makes all the difference when you do the inside of each little individual petal and you really low light the inside of that and it really makes the rest of the reds pop. So, are we on this cheeky little fella down here? Yes, you can see him. So what I've got is, uh, and this is going light to dark, I've got my black. I have my black raspberry. I have my Tuscan red. I have my raspberry. And I have uh, crimson lake and scarlet lake. Don't worry about writing these down. As usual, I'll put them in the I'll put them in the description. I'm going to start with black. I'm going to start with black and this is very straightforward it's just really really straightforward blending as I say nothing I do is is difficult to replicate so let's get cracking so what I'm going to do is on each of these individual little petals I'm going to give the base a little color of black and then the same for these outside petals too because clearly where they're sat behind the foreground petals this would be these little bits here can you see would be in shade slightly so we're going to make those darker okay Let's get cracking. So, tiny, tiny, tiny little light blend line. Firmer behind, into the crease of those petals, like that. And I'm just going to sharpen up my black pencil slightly because we're working in a pretty small area, okay? And all we do is repeat this all the way around. So bear with me, because it'll take a few minutes, but it's worth doing because as I say this tutorial on the beautiful deep red dahlias has been really popular and I've lost count of the times I've said oh I'm so sorry the camera angle is not very good so I thought let's just take 10 minutes to remake it especially now we have so many beautiful dahlias to colour in our world of flowers books okay so it doesn't matter which order you do these in just each little individual petal Needs a light touch blend line of black with a firmer pressure deep black behind it. And just go all the way around. And it's a little bit repetitive, I'm not going to lie. But, as I say, this black is absolutely your secret weapon because that's what gives it the depth of colour. And this is also keeping my mind of things going on at home today. 
my um my handsome boy Freckle is in the veterinary hospital. He's not very well. He had spinal surgery on Friday. And we haven't seen him since, but we're going to go and see him later on this afternoon. And he's not up and about walking yet, so we're praying that he improves and that we can get him home for Christmas. That's all I want for Christmas. I don't want any presents, I just want Freckle home. I'm sure those of you with pets, I know a lot of you have pets and a lot of you have sent well wishes for him. They're part of the family. So you can see how I'm going round. Just leaving a blend line like we always blend before. And you can use polychromos for these. Um, a similar set of the, some of the um, the reds in the polychromos, actually, the Faber-Castell, are really, really rich and beautiful. So you can you can absolutely replicate them with your with your polychromos. And in fact, the the one that I showed you in um, in Ivy is actually polychromos. What I might do is on the description give you the list for both. I think both palettes. And then it doesn't matter whether you've got prisms or polys, you'll be able to, to pick it up. Right, so I need to go around this outside at the bottom. You can see now why I didn't do this tutorial on one of the larger flowers, because we'd be here forever. Just putting these black shadows in the creases in the back of these petals really makes this work so, so well. And I've gone over the line a little bit there, but don't worry about that because we'll be covering it up with deep red. So you don't have to be hugely accurate. I'm just doing this a little bit quicker than I normally would if I was just colouring. So I'm probably going to make a few more little, little errors. Happy accidents, Bob Ross. And this is my last one here. And I know just putting black on a page, just putting black onto a flower just seems crazy. And black is pretty scary to put on a page in any circumstance, but it really works. Honestly, bear with me. Um, so now we go to our black raspberry. And basically, we're going to do exactly the same. So I'm just going to, this time, I'm just going to scumble in, in a medium firm pressure, just over that blend line of the black, because that's the biggest jumping colour we've got. We don't really need to leave a blend line for any of the rest of these reds, because they're pretty similar. So just millimetre by millimetre, we're going to build this colour up. And as I say, it's a little bit repetitive, but do bear with me. So a little hope. Oh. 18 month old Labrador. She's been missing her brother really badly. I think she's secretly liking getting all the attention, but she's very much quieter than she usually is. She loves him. We all love him. Some of you might have seen a, a double page from World of Flowers that I finished yesterday. The epic um, shed page, the epic walled garden from the back of this book that's the uh, pull-out poster. And I finished that one off yesterday after several weekends of work and that one for the first time ever. If, you, if you've seen me sign my work you know I put a little paw print in the right hand bottom corner for Cadbury, my chocolate Labrador that I lost um, about 18 months ago. And uh, the World of Flowers one that I finished yesterday got a little spotty paw print as well. 
just saw that Freckle knows we're all thinking about him. Okay, it's starting to get a tiny bit blunt. Just remember I'm on my black raspberry. Just tiny, tiny little lines each time. Tiny, tiny little lines of colour. And I'm just trying to keep my hand out of shot. Because that was the problem with the first one. I've done a lot more videos since then, so... I'm starting to get the hang of the camera. When I say a camera, it's just my phone. Okay, uh, now we go to Tuscan Red. Exactly the same. And we're just going to keep building that colour up. And because these are wax based, you can see that I don't need to use a blender pencil. Just the same medium firm pressure all the way around will blend these for you. You've just got to remember which petals you've done and which you haven't. So I tend to try and kind of either work left to right or work middle, centre to out, over, if that makes sense. But you can kind of tell which ones you've done because there's a slight colour variation, clearly because you're using different coloured pencils. And just by building this up very slowly, but honestly pay dividends, because you'll get such a beautiful effect. Uh, yes, outside petals, I think. And clearly you'll finish some petals off before others, even in the darker colours, because you can see this one here is disappearing behind this beautiful daisy here. So don't worry if you don't get all the colours on all the petals. You won't, because the petals are different sizes. And it's actually quite nice to get a different variation of which colours you do use on each petal. So you won't get to the lightest Scarlet Lake one on each. But don't worry, we're not meant to. And can you see that colour building up? And you went, once you get to the kind of lighter reds, you really see the contrast with the black in the middle. And like I say, that's your secret weapon because it makes the reds pop. And it really makes you feel like you could touch the petals and they'd be velvety. And talking about velvet, this is the same palette that I used for the, um, the Velvet Drapes tutorial. And it's a really good palette for deep reds. So I think we just need to quickly do this one. And that one. And then we can move to a raspberry. So remember, we used black raspberry, but now we're using just uh, plain raspberry. Again, I'm just going to give it a tiny sharpen. And some of these inside ones, when they're not very long, you will finish off in this colour, so don't worry, as I say, about doing every colour on every petal because they're all slightly different shapes and lengths, rather. Just build it up and build it up. Just a tiny millimetre at a time. And this one I think will finish off. Uh, I need to do that one. And this one. And then I think we can move to the outside ones again. Um, this one. And this one. Right, outside. So you can see for all it's quite repetitive, it still is quite quick. And hopefully this will be a lot better for you to follow than the one that we did a few months ago. Which I will be the first to admit is not good. The effect is good, but the camera angle was awful. OK, 
Okay, what have we got left? I think I'll finish this one off because it's disappearing behind that daisy. Okay, then we go to Crimson Lake. So this is our second um, but least light colour. So you can see there'll be a few that I finish off here because there's not really enough room. They might be on this one. There's not really enough room on some of them to go to that lightest Scarlet Lake. They won't be on this one, because it's longer. Can you see now that we're using the lighter colours? It just really makes, because you've got the, the, the light red going against the black behind it there, it really makes those lighter reds jump off the page. So it's just going back to kind of basic, very basic blending and very basic thoughts about shadow and light. What does that leave me with? Someone here. I've done that one. Finish that one off, I think. And then we go to our final red, which is Scarlet Lake, and then we just basically finish off. And then what I'll quickly do is I'll show you just what colours I like to use for the centre. So that's taken us, what, probably 10 minutes? So not too long. It's not too bad. Does take longer with the bigger flowers, obviously. Okay. Isn't that lovely? You see? Isn't it nice? So, I think I'm going to pull out my Spanish orange, my sunburst yellow, and my canary yellow. I'm just going to give them a sharpen. So, the canary yellow, because I want a, a big contrast, I'm going to go around this line that we um, put the black against so that it really stands out. Just being careful not to pick up any of the black on the tip of that yellow pencil in case we smudge the black into the centre. There we go. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my lightest, which is my, my lighter of the two um, oranges, which is the sunburst yellow. I'm just going to quickly block colour in these petals here. Just the four foreground ones. I'm going to do the background ones in the slightly darker Spanish orange. Okay, and then we'll just finish off. Just because they're in the background, so they'd be a slightly deeper colour. Done. As usual, any questions, drop me a line and I hope you enjoy. Bye for now, guys.